Imagine holding a piece of gold so pure it gleams like frozen sunlight. So flawless it carries the mark of 24 carats, the highest purity recognized by humankind. Now imagine achieving that level of perfection, not with modern machinery, not with toxic chemicals or expensive laboratories, but with a method so old, so overlooked, that history itself seems to have buried it under layers of dust and forgotten wisdom. This is not a fantasy. This is the forgotten trick that produces 24 karat gold. An ancient secret lost to time, but still whispering to those who know where to listen. Gold has always been more than just a metal. It is the eternal measure of wealth, the silent witness of civilizations, and the treasure that kings, miners, and dreamers have fought for across the ages. Let us begin where it always begins, with raw gold fresh from the earth. Picture a miner breaking apart stone, chiseling through veins of quartz, separating the dull host rock from the glittering flecks of yellow that catch his eye. To the untrained observer, that gold looks perfect already. It shines in sunlight. It reflects like a mirror in the riverbed. But in truth, that raw nugget is often no more than 70 to 90% pure. Within it are whispers of silver, copper, iron, and countless trace minerals that cling like shadows to its brilliance. To create 24 karat gold, these shadows must be stripped away. And the forgotten trick begins here, with a process that purifies not by force, but by natural separation. The ancients believed that fire was the key. Fire, they said, had a way of revealing truth. When gold was exposed to flame, it behaved differently than any other element. It did not corrode. It did not vanish into ash. Instead, it seemed to become brighter, as if it were born from fire itself. And so they learned to use flame, not as destruction, but as refinement. They placed their raw gold into crucibles, made not of steel or iron, but of clay hardened by earth and sun. Why clay? Because clay held heat in a steady, even way, and did not corrupt the gold with impurities of its own. Inside those clay crucibles, the forgotten trick would begin to unfold. The key was in the balance of heat. Too little, and the impurities clung stubbornly to the gold. Too much, and the gold itself would become volatile, spitting tiny droplets, losing mass, or even vaporizing at the edges. But at the perfect temperature, something magical occurred. The impurities, those clinging fragments of other metals, would separate, pushed aside by the stability of gold's unique atomic structure. Slowly, drop by drop, the unwanted metals rose, pooled, and were skimmed away. What remained in the crucible was gold of astonishing purity, so pure that its glow was unmistakable even to the naked eye. And thus, step by step, the forgotten trick moved gold closer to 24 karat perfection. Here lies the second secret of the forgotten trick. Water in its purest and coldest form was used to shock the heated gold. Imagine molten gold, still glowing from fire, dropped suddenly into cold water. The gold hissed, screamed, and cracked into smaller fragments. At first glance, this looked like destruction. But in truth, it was creation. By breaking the gold into smaller, more manageable pieces, the surface area expanded, exposing the last remnants of impurities to removal. It was the combination of fire and water, repeated in cycles, that allowed gold to shed its unwanted companions and move toward perfect purity. This cycle was repeated not once, but many times. Fire to melt and separate. Water to fracture and expose. Fire again to fuse the gold back together. Water again to test its resilience. Over and over until the gold had been reborn into something beyond ordinary. The result, after enough cycles, is gold so pure that its value transcends time. 24 karat, untouched by corrosion, unspoiled by other metals, and shining with the glow of eternity. But this is only half the journey. The forgotten trick is not just fire and water. There are further steps involving air, salt, and the earth itself that complete the transformation. The final revelation lies ahead, where gold is not just purified but perfected. Fire and water were only the beginning. 
The ancients knew that the earth itself carried a role in perfecting gold. Once the cycles of melting, fracturing, and refusing had stripped away much of the corruption, the gold was left soft, malleable, and dangerously delicate. At this stage, it needed strength. Not strength from other metals, but strength from purification itself. The forgotten trick introduced salt and air. When combined with fire, the salt created a reactive environment that encouraged the last fragments of base metals to rise out of the gold. The reaction was subtle, almost invisible to the eye. Yet the smiths knew it was happening. They could smell it, hear it in the hiss of flames, and see the surface of molten gold ripple with shadows as impurities surrendered to the fire. The gold was then poured into sand molds. Why sand? Because sand absorbed excess, catching invisible traces that even clay crucibles could not hold back. When the molds were broken apart, what emerged was no longer the raw, rough metal mined from quartz veins or riverbeds. It was something transformed, glowing with an evenness of color, soft enough to bend without breaking, yet resistant to tarnish. What makes this method remarkable is its sustainability. While modern purification often relies on cyanide or mercury, chemicals that poison rivers, soil, and even people, the forgotten trick achieved purity through elements available everywhere. Fire, water, air, salt, clay, and sand. It was as if the earth itself had provided the recipe, waiting for humankind to notice. The ancients didn't describe this process in scientific terms. To them, it was a ritual, almost sacred. The fire represented transformation, the water rebirth, the salt cleansing, and the earth grounding the treasure in permanence. They saw the gold not just as wealth, but as proof that nature itself could reveal perfection when treated with respect. Today, when we speak of 24 karat gold, we imagine modern refineries, massive machines, industrial furnaces. But the forgotten trick reminds us that long before industry, there were people who mastered nature's balance. They could turn dull ore into pure sunlight, not through brute force, but through patience and wisdom. This is the lesson hidden in the forgotten trick. Purity is not rushed. It is earned layer by layer through cycles of trial and refinement. Just like gold itself, greatness is revealed only when everything false has been burned, washed, and stripped away. And so, if you ever hold a piece of 24 karat gold, let it remind you of this secret. You are not only holding wealth, you are holding the memory of a process that stretches back thousands of years, a process nearly erased from history, yet still alive in the glow of pure gold. This, dear viewers, is the forgotten trick that produces 24 karat gold. Not machinery, not chemicals, but the elemental rhythm of fire, water, air, and earth, working together in perfect harmony. It is a story of patience, precision, and wisdom lost to time, yet still echoing in every bar of pure gold that shines today. If this journey into the hidden world of gold fascinated you, remember, there are countless other secrets waiting to be uncovered beneath stone, river, and soil. Here on EGS Pro, we reveal them, one by one, with the depth and mystery they deserve. So if you crave more stories where history, nature, and treasure collide, subscribe to EGS Pro and step into a world where the earth whispers secrets and we bring them to light. Because here, the hunt for hidden wealth never ends.